In the vast, star-streaked expanse of space, the Zentari Confederation's sleek cruiser, the Shadow Veil, glided silently towards its target, a small, blue-green planet known to its inhabitants as Earth. Aboard this vessel, Scout Commander Lyra and her elite team of reconnaissance experts were about to embark on a mission that could potentially alter the course of Zentari history. Their objective was simple yet critical, assess Earth's military capabilities and confirm its vulnerability to a Zentari invasion. The mission was deemed a mere formality by the High Command, a routine check before the inevitable annexation of another world into the Zentari fold. Commander Lyra, a veteran of countless covert operations, knew the importance of subtlety and precision in reconnaissance missions. The Shadow Veil, equipped with the latest in cloaking technology, made them invisible to the most advanced sensors, a ghost ship among the stars. The crew moved with well-rehearsed efficiency, each member acutely aware of the role they played in the grand scheme of the Zentari's galactic ambitions. As they approached Earth, Lyra stood before the main viewport, her gaze fixed on the planet that seemed so tranquil from afar. She mused over the intelligence reports, which painted Earth as a backwater world with primitive spacefaring capabilities, its inhabitants blissfully unaware of the galactic powerhouses that lay beyond their solar system. These reports suggested that Earth's defense would hinge on a modest fleet of supercarriers, impressive perhaps by their standards but no match for the Zentari's might. Yet, Lyra had learned to trust her instincts over the years, and something about this mission felt different. She couldn't shake off a nagging sense of unease, a whisper in the back of her mind that warned of unseen challenges. With a silent command, she initiated the first phase of the operation, deploying a swarm of microprobes to scan the planet and its surroundings for any signs of military installations, shipyards, and the so-called supercarriers. The probes, no larger than a speck of dust, fanned out in a coordinated dance, blending with the cosmic background as they descended upon Earth. They were the eyes and ears of the Shadow Veil, capable of penetrating the deepest bunkers and scanning the most secure frequencies without leaving a trace of their presence. Back on the cruiser, Lyra and her team monitored the incoming data streams, their screens alive with the pulse of distant radars, the chatter of communications networks, and the faint hum of engine signatures. The initial findings seemed to confirm the High Command's assessments, Earth's defenses appeared conventional, their space stations and satellites primitive by Zentari standards. But as the hours passed, anomalies began to surface. Encrypted signals crisscrossed the planet's atmosphere, too sophisticated to be dismissed as mere civilian communications. Energy signatures, unlike any known propulsion systems, emanated from hidden bases on the moon and in the asteroid belt. And most intriguing of all, there were gaps in the surveillance net, shadow zones where their probes could not penetrate, as if something, or someone, was actively blocking them. Lyra's unease grew with each discrepancy. These were not the hallmarks of a civilization on the brink of conquest, but of one prepared for war, their true strength shrouded in secrecy. She pondered the possibility that Earth had somehow leapfrogged decades, perhaps centuries, of technological development in mere years, or that they had allies among the stars, silent guardians watching over them. The mission, initially perceived as a low-risk reconnaissance, was quickly evolving into a high-stakes game of cosmic cat and mouse. Lyra knew that the success of the Zentari invasion hinged on the accuracy of their intelligence and any oversight, any misjudgment could lead to catastrophic consequences. With each passing moment, the Shadow Veil collected more data, piecing together a puzzle that seemed to contradict every preconceived notion the Zentari had about Earth. Lyra faced a critical decision, to send a preliminary report back to Admiral Zorax, highlighting the potential challenges and advising caution, or to delve deeper, risking the mission and her crew in search of undeniable proof of Earth's capabilities. As the Shadow Veil hovered in the silent void, its crew on the brink of a discovery that could change their understanding of the universe, Lyra made her choice. The fate of the Zentari Confederation and Earth hung in the balance, the outcome hinging on the shadows and whispers that danced just beyond the reach of their sensors. As the Shadow Veil lingered in the silent watch over Earth, Commander Lyra's decision to probe deeper into the planet's mysteries bore fruit, but not the kind she had anticipated. 
The data streams from the microprobes began to unveil a tapestry of complexity and sophistication in Earth's defenses that went beyond anything the Zentari had encountered in their conquests. It was as if every layer peeled back revealed another, even more intricate layer beneath. The first sign that something was amiss came when the probes detected a network of underground facilities, their energy signatures masked by the natural geothermal activity of the planet. These facilities were not just bunkers or silos, they were vast complexes, possibly research centers or military bases, hidden from prying eyes beneath mountains and deserts. But it was the discovery of the encrypted communications that truly set the alarms ringing within the Shadow Veil. The encryption was not just advanced, it was dynamic, changing patterns in ways that defied conventional decryption methods. It suggested a level of computational power and sophistication that should have been decades, if not centuries, beyond Earth's reach. Lyra convened her team for an emergency analysis session, the holographic displays in the briefing room alive with data streams and imagery from the probes. The team worked tirelessly, cross-referencing the new data with everything the Zentari knew about Earth and its inhabitants. The picture that emerged was unsettling. The energy signatures detected in the asteroid belt turned out to be from a series of hidden shipyards camouflaged against the rocks and dust. These were not primitive factories churning out simple satellites or probes, they were advanced facilities capable of constructing warships, possibly even supercarriers. Even more disturbing were the shadow zones, areas where their probes could not penetrate. After much analysis, the team concluded that these were not natural phenomena but the result of active countermeasures. Someone or something on Earth was aware of their presence and was actively working to blind their eyes in the sky. The culmination of these discoveries came when one of the probes, venturing too close to the moon's dark side, captured a fleeting image of what could only be described as a fleet in hiding. The ships bore no resemblance to any known Earth design, their sleek, angular forms cutting through the vacuum with an elegance that spoke of advanced technology and formidable firepower. The implications were clear and deeply troubling. Earth was not the technologically backward planet they had been led to believe. It was a sleeping giant, its true capabilities hidden beneath layers of secrecy and misdirection. The Zentari, with their vast armada and centuries of unchallenged supremacy, might be walking into a trap of their own making. Lyra felt the weight of her discovery like a physical burden. She knew that her next steps would be critical. Reporting back to Admiral Zorax and the High Command was her duty, but she also understood the Zentari's disdain for any sign of weakness or hesitation. To suggest that Earth might pose a genuine threat to their fleet would be to question the very foundation of their military doctrine. Yet, the evidence was irrefutable. Lyra crafted her report with care, choosing her words to convey the urgency of the situation without inciting panic or disdain. She presented the facts, the hidden facilities, the encrypted communications, the advanced shipyards, and the mysterious fleet. She recommended a reassessment of their strategy, perhaps even a diplomatic approach to Earth as a means of avoiding a potentially disastrous conflict. As the report was transmitted to the Zentari High Command, a tense silence fell over the Shadow Veil. Lyra and her team waited, knowing that their findings could either be the catalyst for a new, cautious strategy or be dismissed as the overcautious fears of a scout commander who had spent too long staring into the dark. The transmission of Commander Lyra's report through the deep space quantum channels marked a moment of silent anticipation aboard the Shadow Veil. The data, dense with the revelations of Earth's unexpected defensive capabilities and the shadow of a hidden fleet, coursed towards the Zentari High Command, where it would either reshape the Confederation's approach to Earth or be crushed under the weight of military arrogance. Back on the Zentari homeworld, the High Command Citadel, a towering structure of imposing architecture and the epicenter of military power, received the report with an air of routine supremacy. The Zentari, a civilization that prided itself on its unbroken chain of conquests, viewed each new world as a beat to be threaded onto their string of galactic dominion. Earth was expected to be no different, a presumption that Commander Lyra's report now challenged. 
Admiral Zorax, the architect of the impending invasion and a figure of stern authority and unwavering confidence, was among the first to review the findings. His initial reaction was one of skepticism. The Zentari had faced and subdued civilizations with claims of hidden might before, only to reveal their bluffs under the shadow of the Zentari fleet. Yet, as he delved deeper into the report, the evidence became harder to dismiss. The encrypted communications, the concealed shipyards, the advanced energy signatures, and the fleeting glimpse of the mysterious fleet all painted a picture of a planet not just prepared for conflict but perhaps anticipating it. The idea was unsettling, a seed of doubt planted in a field of certainty. The High Command convened in an emergency session a gathering of the Zentari's most decorated and experienced military leaders, each with their own history of conquests and victories. Lyra's report was the sole agenda, its contents projected in holographic detail above the central dais. The atmosphere was charged, a blend of disbelief and concern. To some, the report was a testament to thorough reconnaissance, a call to reassess and adapt. To others, it was an affront, a suggestion that the mighty Zentari fleet could be matched or even bested by a civilization on the fringes of known space. Admiral Zorax, standing before his peers, presented the report with a measured tone. He acknowledged the skill and diligence of Commander Lyra and her team but emphasized the need for perspective. The Zentari had overcome the unexpected before, adapting and overpowering those who dared to challenge them. Yet he could not ignore the strategic implications of the findings. The risk, however slight, demanded consideration. The debate that followed was intense, a clash of ideologies and strategies. Some called for immediate action to strike swiftly before Earth could muster its hidden strength. Others cautioned patience, suggesting further reconnaissance or even diplomatic channels to probe Earth's intentions and capabilities more subtly. In the heart of the storm of voices, a fundamental question emerged. Was the Zentari Confederation, unchallenged rulers of their corner of the galaxy, willing to entertain the notion that their next conquest could bring them not glory, but unforeseen peril? As the session wore on, the High Command found itself at a crossroads torn between the confidence born of centuries of dominance and the unsettling possibility that their unbroken chain of victories might be at risk. The decision they faced was not just about Earth, it was about the very identity of the Zentari as a conquering force. In the end, it was Admiral Zorax who shaped the course of action. Acknowledging the concerns raised by Lyra's report, he proposed a compromise, a phased approach to the Earth campaign. Initial stages would focus on enhanced surveillance and covert operations aiming to unravel Earth's secrets without precipitating open conflict. This cautious advance would be coupled with preparations for a full-scale assault should it prove necessary. This strategy, balancing prudence with readiness, was adopted as the way forward. Commander Lyra's report, once a potential harbinger of change, became the catalyst for a more measured approach to the unknown challenges of Earth. As the Shadow Veil received its new orders, Commander Lyra felt a mixture of relief and burden. Relief that her findings had not been dismissed outright, and a burden for the role she and her crew would play in the unfolding events. The path ahead was uncertain, and the shadows that had once seemed mere anomalies now loomed large, filled with the potential for both discovery and danger. Following the High Command's decision to adopt a more cautious strategy, the Shadow Veil transitioned from reconnaissance to deep cover operations. Commander Lyra, now carrying the weight of her superior's tempered expectations, orchestrated a plan that would delve into the heart of Earth's mysteries. The mission's new phase was not just about observation, it was about infiltration, understanding, and unveiling the secrets that Earth so jealously guarded. Lyra's team, a hand-picked group of Zentari operatives trained for the most sensitive and perilous missions, prepared for deployment. Their targets were the hidden shipyards in the asteroid belt and the encrypted communications networks that spanned the globe. These operations required precision and discretion. The slightest misstep could not only jeopardize the mission, but also provoke the very conflict they hoped to avoid. The operatives, equipped with the latest in stealth technology and hacking tools, were deployed in small, covert units. Their ships, no larger than the debris they hid among, made their silent approach to the asteroid belt. 
The shipyard's massive structures carved into the rocks and disguised against casual observation were a hive of activity. Here, Earth's fleet, or at least a part of it, was being forged. Meanwhile, other members of Lyra's team focused on the complex web of encrypted communications. Using a combination of captured signals and advanced decryption algorithms, they began to peel back the layers of security. It was a painstaking process, one that required both the brute force of computational power and the finesse of intuitive code-breaking. As the days turned into weeks, the fruits of their labor began to emerge. The shipyards, they discovered, were not just producing conventional warships. Among the vessels being constructed were ships of unfamiliar design, their sleek lines and advanced propulsion systems unlike anything in the Zentari or known galactic arsenals. These were ships built for speed, stealth, and firepower, a combination that could challenge even the Zentari's dominance in space warfare. The communications network proved to be equally revealing. The operatives managed to infiltrate the outer layers of the network, uncovering a labyrinth of secure channels used by Earth's military and scientific communities. The traffic was dense with tactical discussions, research data, and strategic planning, painting a picture of a civilization not just preparing for a potential conflict but actively anticipating it. One particular breakthrough came when the team intercepted a series of communications between Earth's military command and what appeared to be off-world assets. These exchanges spoke of alliances, of packs forged in the shadow of a common threat. Earth, it seemed, was not alone. It was part of a larger coalition, one that shared technology, intelligence, and possibly even military support. The implications of these discoveries were profound. Earth was not the isolated, technologically lagging planet the Zentari had assumed it to be. It was a keystone in a larger defensive network, a hub of innovation and collaboration that stood ready to defend not just itself but its allies against any threat. As the reports from these deep cover operations flowed back to the Shadow Veil, Lyra found herself grappling with a mix of admiration and concern. Earth's resilience and foresight were commendable, but they also represented a significant escalation in the stakes of any potential conflict. The Zentari, for all their might, were no longer facing a single world but a united front of unknown proportions. The decision of what to do with this information weighed heavily on Lyra. She understood the strategic value of what her team had uncovered, but she also recognized the potential for catastrophic miscalculation. To underestimate Earth and its allies could lead to unprecedented losses for the Zentari. To overestimate them could provoke a war that might spread across the stars. With meticulous care, Lyra compiled her findings into a comprehensive report detailing not just the capabilities of Earth and its fleet but the broader implications of its alliances and the potential for a galactic-scale conflict. This report, destined for the highest echelons of Zentari command, carried within it the potential to alter the course of Zentari history, for better or worse. The comprehensive report that Commander Lyra sent back to the Zentari High Command served as a stark revelation of Earth's might and its strategic positioning within a broader interstellar alliance. The findings, distilled from weeks of deep cover operations, painted a picture far removed from the initial assessments that had marked Earth as an easy target for conquest. As the Zentari leadership convened to review Lyra's latest findings, the atmosphere was charged with a palpable tension. The revelation that Earth was not a lone entity but part of a formidable alliance equipped with advanced technology and strategic acumen sent ripples of concern through the ranks of the High Command. The prospect of facing not just Earth but its allies necessitated a recalibration of their approach and expectations. Admiral Zorax, who had previously championed the invasion, found himself in a precarious position. The report detailed the advanced nature of Earth's fleet, highlighting ships with stealth capabilities, formidable firepower, and designs that suggested a level of technological sophistication on par with, if not surpassing, Zentari engineering. These were not the rudimentary vessels they had expected, but warships capable of posing a significant threat in combat. Further complicating matters was the discovery of Earth's interstellar partnerships. 
the communications intercepted by Lyra's team hinted at a network of mutual defense packs, technology sharing, and coordinated military strategies. This alliance, formed in the shadows, stood ready to support Earth, transforming what had been perceived as an isolated campaign into a potential multi-front conflict. The High Command was forced to confront the reality that an invasion of Earth could inadvertently draw the Zentari Confederation into a wider war, one that could stretch their resources and expose vulnerabilities within their own territories. The strategic calculus had shifted dramatically. What was once seen as a swift and decisive expansion now loomed as a quagmire that could entangle the Zentari fleet in protracted engagements across multiple systems. The revelation of Earth's integrated defense systems further underscored the planet's preparedness for conflict. Lyra's report detailed a global network of satellites, ground-based installations, and orbital platforms that formed a multi-layered defense grid capable of detecting and engaging threats from deep space. This grid, coupled with the rapid response capabilities of Earth's fleet, presented a formidable barrier to any invasion force. As the High Command digested the report, the initial reactions of disbelief and skepticism gave way to a grudging respect for Earth's strategic posture. The discussions that followed were marked by a newfound caution, a recognition that any military action against Earth would need to be carefully considered and meticulously planned. The revelation of Earth's might also sparked a broader debate within the Centauri leadership about the Confederation's approach to expansion and conquest. Some members of the High Command began to question the wisdom of aggressive territorial acquisition, suggesting that the time might have come for the Zentari to explore more diplomatic avenues of influence. Admiral Zorax, reflecting on the findings and the ensuing debate, acknowledged the need for a strategic pivot. The prospect of engaging Earth and its allies in a conflict that could escalate beyond their control was a risk that the Zentari could ill afford. The Admiral proposed a temporary halt to the invasion plans, advocating instead for a period of intensified surveillance and a reassessment of the Confederation's long-term strategy. This proposal, while controversial, was ultimately adopted by the High Command. The revelation of Earth's might had served as a wake-up call, prompting the Zentari to reconsider their approach to interstellar relations. The focus shifted from immediate conquest to a more cautious strategy of observation, analysis, and, potentially, engagement through channels other than outright warfare. As the Shadow Veil received the new directives, Commander Lyra felt a mixture of relief and vindication. Her efforts and those of her team had not only unveiled the true nature of Earth's defenses but had also, perhaps, averted a catastrophic conflict. The path ahead was uncertain, but for the moment, Earth's might had earned it a reprieve from the shadow of Zentari conquest. The revelations brought forth by Commander Lyra's exhaustive report did more than just illuminate Earth's unexpected military prowess. They ignited a storm of tension and ideological division within the Zentari High Command. The once unquestioned path of aggressive expansion and dominance now faced scrutiny under the harsh light of potential vulnerability and unforeseen resistance. Admiral Zorax, a figure long revered for his strategic acumen and decisive victories, found himself at the epicenter of this burgeoning storm. The report's implications, suggesting a need for caution and potentially a re-evaluation of Zentari militaristic policies, did not sit well with all factions within the command. A schism was forming, with hardliners on one side advocating for the continuation of their expansionist doctrine, viewing any deviation as a sign of weakness. On the other side were the pragmatists, who, influenced by the new intelligence, saw merit in restraint and a more diplomatic approach to the Zentari's interactions with emerging spacefaring civilizations like Earth. The debates that ensued were charged with an intensity that had not been seen within the High Command in generations. The hardliners, led by General Vrax, a veteran of countless campaigns, argued that the Zentari's place at the pinnacle of galactic power was maintained not by caution, but by the will to act decisively. They saw the report not as a warning, but as a challenge, a test of the Confederation's resolve to maintain its dominance. Conversely, the pragmatists, with Admiral Zorax emerging as an unexpected advocate, argued that the galaxy was changing. 
The emergence of a planet like Earth, capable of such rapid technological advancement and forming strategic alliances, indicated a shift in the interstellar landscape. They posited that the Zentari could no longer afford to rely solely on military might. The complexities of the new galaxy required a blend of diplomacy, intelligence, and force. This ideological rift extended beyond the confines of the High Command's meeting chambers. It permeated the entire Zentari military structure, with officers and enlisted ranks alike taking sides in a debate that questioned the very identity of the Zentari Confederation. The tension was palpable not just in heated discussions and strategic debates but in the everyday interactions of those who had once been unified in purpose. The pragmatists, sensing the potential for a paradigm shift, began to advocate for the establishment of a dedicated diplomatic corps, a notion that had been anathema to the Zentari's traditional military hierarchy. They argued that understanding and engaging with the burgeoning network of spacefaring civilizations could open new avenues for expansion that did not involve the costly toll of conquest. Meanwhile, the hardliners viewed this as a dilution of the Zentari spirit, a betrayal of the principles that had guided them to become a dominant force in the galaxy. They saw strength in unity and in the unwavering pursuit of expansion, believing that any sign of hesitation would be exploited by their adversaries. As the debate raged on, Admiral Zorax found himself increasingly isolated. His shift towards a more cautious approach, influenced by the undeniable evidence presented by Lyra's report, put him at odds with many of his longtime allies. The Admiral, once the embodiment of Zentari martial prowess, now championed a path that many viewed as antithetical to their civilization's ethos. The tension within the Zentari command reached a crescendo with the potential to either forge a new path for the Confederation or fracture its leadership at a critical juncture. The stakes were high and the decisions made in the wake of this internal strife would shape the Zentari's approach to Earth and the broader galaxy for generations to come. As Commander Lyra awaited further orders, the weight of her discoveries bore down not just on her but on the entire Zentari civilization. The path forward was fraught with uncertainty, and the once unbreakable facade of Zentari unity was showing signs of strain under the pressure of an evolving galactic landscape. In the wake of the intense debates and ideological rifts within the Zentari High Command, a decision was reached that sought to tread a middle path between the hardliners' call for immediate action and the pragmatists' caution for diplomacy and further intelligence gathering. The Zentari would advance, but this movement was to be a calculated demonstration of strength, designed to test Earth's defenses and gauge the resolve of its purported interstellar allies. Admiral Zorax, navigating the turbulent waters of Zentari politics and military strategy, orchestrated this advance with a keen awareness of the stakes involved. The operation was to be a show of force, a flexing of the Zentari's considerable military muscle, yet executed with strict orders to avoid outright aggression. The goal was to position the Zentari fleet within striking distance of Earth, making their presence known without crossing the threshold into open conflict. The fleet assembled for this advance was formidable, comprising some of the most advanced warships in the Zentari arsenal. Each vessel, bristling with weaponry and shielded by the latest defensive technology, was a testament to the Zentari's military prowess. Yet, hidden within this display of force was a layer of subtlety, a nod to the pragmatists' concerns about precipitating a galactic-scale conflict. As the fleet moved into position, the Zentari employed a range of passive and active sensors to probe Earth's defenses and monitor any changes in the disposition of its forces. The operation was as much about gathering intelligence as it was about demonstrating power. The Zentari were keen to observe how Earth and its allies would respond to this calculated provocation, looking for signs of weakness or division that could be exploited. Commander Lyra aboard the Shadow Veil found herself in a unique position. Her previous reconnaissance missions had laid the groundwork for this operation, and now her ship served as the eyes and ears of the Zentari fleet, cloaked and silent amidst the stars. Lyra's team worked tirelessly, intercepting communications, analyzing energy signatures, and tracking the movements of Earth's fleet. The tension aboard the Shadow Veil was palpable as they awaited Earth's response. 
Would the planet's defenders scramble their fleet, launch a preemptive strike, or seek to open channels of communication? The uncertainty of the situation was a stark reminder of the fine line the Zentari were walking between intimidation and engagement. As hours turned into days, the Zentari fleet's presence did not go unnoticed. Earth's forces, bolstered by the technological advancements and strategic positioning revealed in Lyra's reports, remained vigilant but did not initiate hostilities. It seemed that Earth's leadership, much like the Zentari's, was grappling with the dilemma of how to respond to this display of extraterrestrial might. Meanwhile, the broader galactic community watched with bated breath. News of the Zentari fleet's advance spread through diplomatic channels and intelligence networks, sparking a flurry of speculation and concern among other spacefaring civilizations. The prospect of a conflict between the Zentari and a coalition of Earth and its allies had far-reaching implications, threatening to disrupt the fragile balance of power that had maintained peace in this sector of the galaxy. Admiral Zorax, monitoring the situation from the command ship, was acutely aware of the broader geopolitical ramifications of their actions. The advance, while achieving its goal of showcasing Zentari strength, also underscored the complexities of the new interstellar landscape in which they found themselves. The old paradigms of conquest and subjugation were giving way to a more nuanced reality, where diplomacy and alliance building were becoming as crucial as military might. As the standoff continued, with neither side willing to make the first move, the Zentari advance served as a catalyst for a deeper re-evaluation of the Confederation's approach to expansion and engagement with emerging civilizations. The operation, conceived as a straightforward demonstration of power, had evolved into a pivotal moment in Zentari history, one that highlighted the need for adaptability and strategic foresight in an ever-changing galaxy. As the Zentari fleet maintained its formidable presence just beyond the outer reaches of Earth's solar system, the tension that had been simmering in the cold expanse of space reached a critical juncture. It was during a routine patrol that a small contingent of Zentari scout ships, equipped with the latest stealth technology, inadvertently crossed paths with a squadron of Earth's defense craft. This chance encounter, occurring in the shadow of a moon of Jupiter, would mark the first direct engagement between the two forces. The Earth Squadron, part of the newly established Interplanetary Defense Coalition, IDC, was on high alert due to the looming Centauri threat. These ships, a blend of Earth's engineering and technology shared by their interstellar allies, were designed for rapid response and engagement. The Zentari scouts, caught off guard by the sudden appearance of the IDC ships, found themselves in a precarious situation. Commander Lyra, aboard the Shadow Veil, monitored the unfolding situation with a mix of apprehension and resolve. The rules of engagement were clear. Avoid direct conflict unless absolutely necessary. However, the surprise encounter left little room for maneuver. The Zentari scouts, trained for reconnaissance, not combat, were ill-equipped for a sustained engagement. The initial moments were marked by a tense standoff. The IDC squadron, led by Captain Elena Vasquez, a veteran of Earth's nascent Space Force, issued a stern warning to the Zentari scouts, demanding their immediate withdrawal from the system. The Zentari, recognizing the potential for escalation, attempted to disengage, but not before deploying a series of passive probes aiming to gather as much data as possible in the brief encounter. What followed was a high-stakes game of cat and mouse. The IDC ships, leveraging their advanced propulsion systems, maneuvered to intercept the Zentari scouts, aiming to capture or destroy the probes. The Zentari, in turn, employed evasive tactics using the gravitational pull of Jupiter's moons to create obstacles and cover. The engagement, though brief, was intense. Energy weapons flashed in the dark, illuminating the space between the ships with brief flares of destructive power. The Zentari scouts, outmatched in firepower but superior in agility, managed to evade direct hits, but the strain on their systems was evident. Commander Lyra, understanding the gravity of the situation, made a decisive call. She ordered the scouts to abort their mission and return to the fleet, leaving behind the probes as a calculated loss. The priority was to avoid any casualties that could escalate the situation into a full-blown conflict. 
As the Zentari scouts made their retreat, Captain Vasquez and her squadron ceased their pursuit, content with neutralizing the immediate threat. However, the encounter was far from inconsequential. Both sides had gained valuable insights into the other's capabilities and intentions. For the Zentari, the swift and coordinated response of the IDC was a clear indication of Earth's readiness to defend its territory. For Earth and its allies, the encounter served as a sobering reminder of the Zentari's advanced technology and their willingness to probe defenses. The aftermath of the first encounter was marked by a flurry of analysis and debriefing on both sides. The Zentari High Command, receiving Lyra's detailed report of the incident, was forced to reconsider their underestimation of Earth's defensive capabilities. The skirmish, though minor, had revealed a level of preparedness and technological sophistication that demanded a reassessment of their approach. On Earth, the successful repulsion of the Zentari scouts was met with a mix of relief and renewed determination. Captain Vasquez's report, detailing the encounter and the tactics employed by the Zentari, became a crucial piece of intelligence, informing future defensive strategies and strengthening the resolve of the IDC. The first encounter, a seemingly minor skirmish on the fringes of the solar system, had far-reaching implications. It served as a catalyst for a shift in the dynamics between Earth and the Zentari, highlighting the fragile balance of power and the thin line between deterrence and open warfare. In the aftermath of the first encounter between Zentari scouts and the Interplanetary Defense Coalition Squadron, Commander Lyra found herself ensnared in a web of moral and strategic complexities. The skirmish, though brief and without casualties, had unveiled the stark reality of the situation. The brinkmanship being played by both sides could easily spiral into a devastating conflict, one that neither Earth nor the Zentari could afford. Lyra, a career officer who had dedicated her life to the Zentari Confederation's expansionist ideals, was now confronted with a dilemma that challenged her deeply held beliefs. The reconnaissance missions she had led, once perceived as routine operations in the service of the Confederation's grandeur, now bore the weight of potential interstellar war. The tension within the Zentari High Command, further exacerbated by the encounter, mirrored the turmoil within Lyra. The hardliners, emboldened by the scout's ability to evade the IDC forces, pushed for an aggressive posture, advocating for a demonstration of Zentari superiority that would teach Earth and its allies a lesson. The pragmatists, however, saw the incident as a harbinger of the catastrophic consequences of miscalculation and urged for a strategic reassessment and diplomatic overtures. Caught between these opposing factions, Lyra grappled with her responsibility as a commander and her duty to the Confederation. The intelligence gathered during her missions, particularly the latest report on the first encounter, held the power to influence the High Command's decisions. Yet, she questioned whether continuing down this path of brinkmanship was in the best interest of her people and the galaxy at large. The revelation of Earth's alliances and technological prowess, coupled with the demonstrated resolve of the IDC, had made it abundantly clear that any conflict would not be the swift and decisive victory the Zentari had initially envisioned. The potential for a protracted war, with far-reaching consequences for both sides, loomed large in Lyra's considerations. Amidst this internal conflict, Lyra received encrypted communications from her contacts within the Zentari intelligence community, further complicating her dilemma. These messages hinted at divisions within the Zentari political sphere, with some factions secretly advocating for peace talks with Earth, fearing the destabilizing effects of a full-scale war on the Confederation's territories. Lyra was torn. To openly support the call for diplomacy would be to risk her standing within the military and potentially her career. Yet, to remain silent would be to acquiesce to a course of action that she increasingly believed could lead to unnecessary bloodshed. In the solitude of her quarters aboard the Shadow Vale, Lyra weighed her options. The decision she faced was not just about military strategy, but about the future of the Zentari Confederation and its place in the galaxy. The path of aggression, once so clear, now seemed fraught with peril and uncertainty. After much contemplation, Lyra made a courageous decision. 
She would use her influence and the intelligence at her disposal to advocate for a reassessment of the Zentari's stance towards Earth. She began drafting a comprehensive report, not just as a military commander but as a citizen of the galaxy, urging the High Command to consider the long-term implications of their actions. This report, meticulously compiled and supported by evidence from her missions, called for a strategic pause, a period of reflection and dialogue with Earth and its allies. Lyra proposed the establishment of back-channel communications, seeking to explore the possibilities for peaceful coexistence and mutual benefit. As she transmitted the report, Lyra knew that she was crossing a Rubicon. The document, a blend of intelligence analysis and personal conviction, was a testament to her evolution from a dutiful officer to a visionary leader, one who recognized that true strength lay not in the might of one's fleet but in the ability to forge a path towards peace and understanding. Lyra's dilemma and the decision that emerged from it marked a turning point in the Centauri's approach to Earth. The report, once disseminated among the High Command and the broader Zentari political apparatus, ignited a wave of debate and introspection, setting the stage for a possible shift in the Confederation's interstellar policy. As the Zentari fleet lingered in the shadow of the outer planets, poised like a sword above the heart of the solar system, the galaxy held its breath. The tension that had been building, stoked by skirmishes, espionage, and the fierce debate within the Zentari High Command had reached its zenith. The eve of what could escalate into a historic battle was upon both the Zentari and Earth, with the potential to shape the future of interstellar relations. Commander Lyra's report, advocating for a pause and reconsideration of the Zentari's approach towards Earth, had rippled through the ranks of the High Command. The document, a blend of raw intelligence and a plea for diplomacy, found its way into the hands of key figures within the Zentari political and military hierarchy. The response was as varied as it was intense, with some viewing Lyra's actions as the epitome of strategic foresight, while others saw it as an affront to the Confederation's proud martial traditions. Amidst this tumult, Admiral Zorax found himself at a crossroads. The seasoned commander, who had once been a staunch advocate for the Confederation's expansionist policies, now contemplated the weight of the impending conflict. Lyra's report, coupled with the first encounter's revelations, had sown seeds of doubt in his mind about the wisdom of pursuing a full-scale invasion. On Earth, the mood was one of grim determination. The Interplanetary Defense Coalition, buoyed by the successful repulsion of the Centauri scouts but mindful of the looming threat, had mobilized its forces. Ships from Earth and its allies formed a defensive cordon around the planet, a shield of steel and resolve against the specter of invasion. The people of Earth, united by the common cause of defending their home, watched the skies with a mix of fear and defiance. The night before what many believed would be the dawn of a decisive confrontation, Lyra and her crew aboard the Shadow Veil undertook one final mission. In the cover of darkness, they deployed a series of stealth drones towards Earth, not armed with weapons but with a message. This message, encoded within the drone's data cores, was a direct communication from Lyra to the leaders of the IDC, extending an olive branch and expressing a desire for dialogue. As the drones made their silent approach towards Earth, the Zentari fleet received unexpected orders from the High Command. In a move that shocked many within the ranks, the fleet was instructed to hold its position and engage in a series of non-aggressive maneuvers. This directive, influenced by the growing support for Lyra's position within the High Command, was a tacit acknowledgement of the need for a strategic reassessment. The eve of battle, thus, transformed from a prelude to war into a moment of cautious reflection. The Zentari fleet, a symbol of might and conquest, now stood as a testament to the potential for change. An Earth, braced for the worst, found a glimmer of hope in the darkness. As the first light of dawn crept across the solar system, the anticipated battle had not begun. Instead, the stage was set for a possible détente, a chance for peace born from the brink of war. The actions of individuals like Lyra and the decisions of leaders on both sides had steered the course of events towards a path less traveled by the militaristic annals of the galaxy. This pivotal moment, 
teetering between conflict and conciliation, underscored a fundamental truth that the future of interstellar relations would be shaped not just by the might of armies, but by the courage to seek understanding and the wisdom to embrace diplomacy.